Namaste, everyone. This is part three of the Sun Salutation mini workshop series, the playlist that I'm building on this channel. What we're covering today is third or fourth and fifth position in the Sun Salutation, which is Chaturanga Dandasana, a low push up and the upward facing dog. Now, I already have a video, I'll link it below, on a crash course in down dog, so I won't cover the details of down dog. It's a very common pose. What we've done so far is raising the arms from standing, lowering, looking forward into a half fold, and now we're coming back into Chaturanga. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you go and see those videos first. And we're, it's a lot to cover Chaturanga and Upward Dog, but it seamlessly transitions into Upward Dog, so we're just going to go ahead and cover that first. <clears throat> so the first thing to do is really warm up the wrists because we're going to be weight-bearing in a push-up, and if you're doing this, you might not be warm, it might not be the middle of your routine, so just make some fists and do circles. Obviously, if at any point you have questions, you just type them, I'll answer them at the end. Go the other direction. I will address a little bit of anatomy today, but it won't be super intense. And interlace your fingers with the knuckles facing back towards you and do figure eights. go the other direction. Now take your fist or your hand and make a fist as you flex the wrist and then extend the wrists and the fingers. Make sure you go through that full range. We want to wake up the back of the forearms, which is something I will talk in detail about. For right now, you can go slow, you can go fast. If you do this from full range of motion of flexion to extension, it should only take a few reps before you really start to feel your forearms working. Good, release it. And I'll do my best with the camera angle to show you what's going on in the body. What I have is three yoga blocks. Maybe you don't have three yoga blocks. Um, if you have one, that would be very helpful. And, and if you don't have any, that's fine. Uh, you can still do everything that we're doing today without those. So go ahead and let's stretch the wrist a little bit. Fingers face back towards you. And again, you might already be warm, so just bear with us while we all warm up our wrists for just a minute. And now come onto the back of the wrists and just stretch the back of the forearms. You can have as little or as much weight on the hands as comfortable. All right, so what we're not covering today is jumping. What happens in the sun salutation, so if I was, this is third position, uh, second position. Third position, I'm gazing forward. I have Uddiyana Bandha, I'm pulling in. So second position was my forward fold. Third position, I'm looking forward and I'm sucking in and up the belly. Now, in the Ashtanga system, you would jump back, but there's a lot of intricacies to the jump and I'll cover that in its own video. So we'll just step back. And I'll lower this a little bit so you can see my hands move, build, skeleton. So from third position, I'll just step back and I'm in a high plank. From here, just come to the knee. So we're in tabletop. All right, you still can't see the hands. What is most important is a spreading sensation between in the web space between the first finger and the thumb. And as difficult as it might be, we really want to press the entire inner edge of the thumb down into the mat. This is going to engage a lot of fascia connections. It's amazing. When I was in India and David, I had a lot of SI pain. I would go through, it was very, very painful to go through a low push up to an upward facing dog. I would kind of finagle my pelvis so it clicks would happen and it was comfortable. And then I'd come back to my down dog. David comes over and corrects my hand position and how I'm pressing through the palms. What was happening is what he would call lazy hands. So be aware when you're bearing weight on the hand, 
that sometimes that knuckle will come up that you can't see. So as I bear weight on the hands, it happens a lot in like hand standing or crow pose, any kind of weight bearing, is that inner knuckle will start to creep up and you'll end up, you see how the, the knuckles are coming up, you end up bearing weight on the outer edge of the palm. That's no good because the wrist, the joint is on the thumb side, the radial carpal joint. This side of the wrist is not a joint. It's a bunch of small bones, some connected tissues. There is like kind of a cartilage there, but it's not, the hands in general aren't made for weight bearing. But the inner wrist, the radial carpal joint where the thumb meets the forearm, it can bear a lot of weight. That's, I mean, people are doing one-handed handstands on that joint. And so you put weight into that joint by spreading more, which is as we were doing our warm up, it's the forearm extensors. So you have flexors, extensors. So the finger extensors, the forearm extensors, the more you can engage the back of the forearm because of the reciprocal relaxation reflex, the more the front of the forearm will relax, which will help you spread the palm. A lot of times people's fingers are, or the, the palms are kind of creeping up because there's too much engagement and tension in the front of the forearm. If you focus more, on engaging the back of the forearm to press completely, full spreading completion. The hand is your foundation. Never ignore your foundation. Whatever your foundation is in the pose, in standing poses, it's your feet. In belly poses, it's your belly. In your back, it's your back. You know, whatever is in contact with the earth, you wanna make that wider and more stable. So if it's the hands, make those really wide and press down and you know the secret area is this kind of triangle between the base of the first finger, the inner base of the wrist and the thumb. Okay. So, uh, what we're gonna do is, is this phenomenon of posterior tilt. The shoulders and the neck and I've said this in so many videos, are a reflection of the pelvis, which means when the pelvis, when you poke the butt out, which is an anterior tilt, you also tend to anterior tilt the, the scapulas. And this creates the arch in the lower back and a rounding in the shoulders. Conversely, if you can do a PPT, that tends to open the shoulders, also a PPT of the scapula. So, PPT is posterior pelvic tilt. So when the pelvis goes forward, the scapulas also tend to go forward. When the pelvis goes backwards, the scapulas then can open up more. So you see this a lot, a lot, a lot in low push-up positions where, yeah where people's butts will come out and their shoulders roll forward. Let's see if I can do that. <laughs> I haven't really trained myself to do it that. So this would be like not a good push-up position, butt out. So people tell you tuck, and then we want to open the shoulders. So the way that I have trained myself to be able to do this is simply using the sense, sense of feeling on the ground. So I come into just on my belly really straight legs. The legs will lengthen your spine. If you can extend to infinity from the pelvis down through the heels, that will help you lengthen the spine. The hesitation to fully embody the legs is creating uh, contraction. It's creating lack of space in the spine. So imagine very, very long legs while you do this. Now, the hand position just like we said, you might even turn the fingers out a little bit. will help you pour more weight into the inner wrist. Bone stacking, so I want the elbow right over the palms, not so much forward like this. Whatever I plant the feet, which would be about hip width apart. We don't need to go super into that. And then really straighten the legs, straighten through the heels, really pushing back through the heels. Now pour about 10 or 15 percent of your weight in your hands so it's not you're not going to lift your whole body up but have just a little bit of weight in the hand and then right here tuck the pelvis so you want to feel that and then you can release but keep the legs straight gaze either down towards the nose or slightly in front of you pour 10 to 15 percent weight into the hands and then tuck 
tuck the pelvis and then release and then tuck the pelvis. This is called a posterior pelvic tilt drill. And ideally you want to keep the shoulders up and back, slide the shoulder blades down the back and then really ease the breath and go ahead and hold for just a moment. Feel, feel how the lower belly tucks off the ground. Feel how the tailbone is pulling towards the ground. Feel your sit bones, the ischial tuberosity is pulling towards your heels and release. Now, if you found that very challenging, which it is a challenging movement, uh, you can do it without the toes tucked. You can do it on the thighs and it's a similar sensation. Just feel with that scooping, with that sensation of scooping it so that the lower, lower back really lengthens and flattens. It's no longer being crunched in this kind of spinal extension. So we're playing with the spinal extension, which is this butt hooking up, and then a spinal flexion or a posterior pelvic tilt. We need to find what does this feel like? Because eventually we're gonna do it in a chaturanga. So we need to be able to hold that. Good. We'll come back to that. I wanna show you what it is in detail that we're doing. Some of you may already know this, this is the last anatomy I'll show on this video, I promise. So this is the abdomen, right? And you can see the six pack muscle, the rectus, uh, the external obliques, the internal obliques. And then underneath that, there's the transverse abdominis. So those are four muscles, rectus, external obliques, which are more on the surface, internal obliques, which are under that. And then under that is transverse, four muscles. So the deepest is transverse and the most superficial, the one on top is the six pack muscle rectus. But something interesting happens right below the navel. Uh, so the navel where those two hip points are, if you can draw a line between those two hip points, which is a, an inch or two below the navel, right there at that level, rectus abdominis will slip underneath those other three muscles. So from that point, if you draw a line from the front two hip points, rectus slips under and then goes all the way to the pubic symphysis, the bottom of the pelvis there. In this region, the lower belly, rectus abdominis is actually the deepest abdominal muscle. It goes from being on the surface to being the deepest. Deepest means parasympathetic, which means to access it, you need to train your body while in a parasympathetic nervous system state, which is most easily affected if you haven't seen how to stop your heart rate, I have that video. It's diaphragmatic breathing, accessing the vagus nerve, and a lot of these other datums that we have, like are your fingers clenching, are your toes clenching, is your tongue clenching? You have space in the soft palate, Kechari Mudra. And if you can maintain these things, probably in my opinion, the most important are soft face, space behind the throat, and a diaphragmatic breath. If you can keep those three, then you're at least very close to parasympathetic state, which makes it easier to access the lower belly. So you have from the two hip points, this line, the six pack muscle slips under the other muscles. And so from to the pubic symphysis, this lowermost belly, which is uh, difficult on most people to engage, that's what we're doing. We're finding the rectus, which is pull the bottom of rectus abdominis pulls the bottom of the sternum towards the pubic symphysis but we want to emphasize that in the lowermost belly so we just did a difficult exercise we'll back it off a little bit to a slightly easier and then we'll build it back up it's laying on the on the back it's an arch and a hollow but now i want you to find the hollow keep the butt on the ground let go of the glute muscles so i really want it to be abdomen gently push the toes into the ground as you hollow more. So that means pull the pubic symphysis towards the xiphoid. So the bottom of the sternum towards the bottom of the pelvis. Gently press the toes into the ground. The heels become light. Keep the butt as soft as possible. Deep breaths, diaphragmatic breaths. Start to train soft face, space in the palate, diaphragm breath while you hold this PPT. And release it. So this can be trained uh, 
many, many sets. I'll link below my video for the transverse abdominus isolation. You want to have transverse abdominus included in this, which is a very, it's a corset effect. It's wrapping the love handles around and forward to the front. So one more time, press the lower back flat into the back like you were trying to crush the ground below your lower back. Gently press the toes into the ground. The heels become light. Relax the butt. You can even bring hands on the belly will help bring awareness there. Deep breaths. It's very difficult to inhale while you have the abdomen engaged like this. So just know that. It's, it's going to take effort. That's fine. That means you're doing it right. And really feel that lowermost ab right where I was showing you, below the navel. Feel that shortening, that crunching sensation right at the front of the lowermost belly. Soft face, space behind the throat, diaphragm breathing. And release. Good. So roll it over to the belly. One more time. Maybe this time we'll, we'll back it off. I gave you a, a heavy taste that first drill. So we'll do a slightly easier one with the head resting on the forearms. And it's a similar sensation of arching and then hollow. And you can let go of the legs, so maybe the legs are rotating or moving while you do this motion. But really feel the butt poke up and then feel the tailbone tucked under. And if you'd like, maybe emphasize that hollow and hold that for as long as you can. Try to, try to touch your tailbone to the ground. It's not physically possible, but that visualization is helpful. Good. Okay. So... One more time, we'll do that first drill. Hands planted almost like cobra position or a low push-up position. Tuck the toes under the heels and then straighten the legs. Start with straight legs. So I'm on my belly, but my legs are super engaged. Rim of the pelvis, floor of the pelvis, the top of, or the, top of the shin bones, and the bottom of the ankle. Straight line all the way down. Then take the hand position. Really broad, flat palms ground through the inner palm. Gaze forward and then hollow. You feel how that brings the pelvis off the ground and your weight comes into your chest. Maybe you drop it and then hollow. Keep the legs engaged, 15% on the hands, and maybe for just a second try to lift your body an inch. And then maybe you'd like to go through an up dog. And down dog. Just to uh, kind of distribute the energy and the tension that we accumulate through that drill. Now, uh, we're going to progress into three more PPT drills. And this is really, it's a progression of how can I keep the pelvis in the posterior tilt while I increase how much weight I'm bearing on my arms. Because remember the tendency for weight bearing on the arms, pec minor will take over. Uh, check out my release for pec minor video. I'll link that below. So pec minor will overly engage and round the shoulders forward. They're, the shoulders and the pelvis reflect each other. If the shoulders go into this anterior tilt, the pelvis will go into an anterior tilt. And structurally, that's not as strong as this kind of rigid shape that we're embodying. The low push-up, just remember, from day one of the sun salutation, samastiti, single position. Chaturanga low push-up is the single position with bent arms. That's it. It's standing with good form, all of the spotlights aligned like I described in that video, but with bent arms. You know? It's just the single position with bent arms. Uh, so, because after each of these three progressions that I'll take you to, and then we'll wrap up the video, uh, I'm going to invite you to go ahead and go into upward facing dog and downward dog because you accumulate tension just working on the low push-up. And so now we'll take a minute to talk about upward dog. Upward dog, remember in, in low push-up, chaturanga, the uh, fourth position, the gaze is either right beyond the nose or slightly in front of you. As you transition to upward dog, you trace align with your vision and the vision is up and back and the tendency and you do what feels good for you i'm not you know you're not right in front of me so if there's pain obviously you must modify there are some people that as they come through up with dog they tuck the chin and then they lift 
is creating a separation between the fascia around the neck and the fascia of the torso. We want a unified motion. So the arching of the spine includes the arching of the neck or extension of the neck to be technically accurate. So as I come through, the head is arching or the neck is extending at the same time as the spine is extending. It's one fluid motion. Let me, I'll back this up a little bit. The upward facing dog is on the tops of the feet. The upward facing dog is on the tops of the feet. Okay, so the, but the thighs are off the ground. Now, as you're doing this um, exercise, and it's not uncommon for me, especially if, I, if I'm sore or it's early in the morning and I'm just waking up, to do an upward dog from the knees whatever you want to call that. There's still an engagement in the legs, but just maybe I'm not engaging so much that my knees come up. That increases the weight load on the hands. So you can maybe do it on the knees, but point the feet and uh, definitely all, <laughs> all these videos I'm linking. Purvotanasana, I do a crash course on Purvotanasana in which I show you how to access the hamstrings and find how the, the sit bones, the ischial tuberosities on both hips, connect to the Achilles. So you want to feel that connection as you come into the upward facing dog. Looking up and back and then on the exhale, uh, the downward dog. Now I don't recommend like I just did there of just tucking the toes and going all over. Like I said, if you're injured or if you're sore, it's early in the morning, you do what you need to. Ideally, the ideal that you're going for eventually is just to go right back over the toes. So there's no one at a time, which will develop a pattern. There's no tuck the toes, come back and do that. I mean, you can if you're stiff. The ideal is you're up on the toes and you just go right back down dog. I'll say one more thing about up dog is that I want the shoulders over the wrists. I don't want the shoulders in front of the wrists. I don't want the shoulders behind the wrists that will collapse into the lower back. I want the shoulders directly over the wrists. But we're coming to up dog from chaturanga. So if you're like me and your back bend isn't, you know, super contortionist and impressive, if I keep my feet where they are, my shoulders end up in front of my wrists. So I actually need to take my feet back. See how I slide my feet back to come into it. That's different than if I was in chaturanga and I plant the feet one at a time and then come up. Uh, this is very important. The chest opening is facilitated if the shoulders are directly over the wrists because with the bone stacking, there's a lot of stabilizer muscles that can let go. If the shoulders are not, if they're in front or behind the wrists, there's other muscle engagement that's occurring. It's not necessary. Stack the bones, which is stacking the energy and the effort, and then the chest can open more. We could go really deep into upper dog and, and I might do that one day. But so... What I'm saying essentially is you're in your push-up position and as I come to up dog, be aware that you want the wrists under the shoulders right there. I didn't get it because my feet stay put. So I slide the feet back when I come up. It's all on the inhale. As I go to my chaturanga, I complete the exhale in the pose. Chaturanga is a pose. Then as I initiate the inhale, initiates upward dog. Then the exhale initiates into down dog. Okay. So obviously it's a lot. I'm throwing a lot at you. You can watch this video again. And we just have a few minutes left. I don't want to take too long. So I will show you very quickly. We'll go rapid fire three more progressions for the PPT. The first is basically the same one or two blocks under the chest. Now, ladies, if you have breastuses, maybe you put it on a different setting so it goes between. I, I don't want it up in the throat, but I want it on the sternum somewhere, on the that front plate. And it's just the same. I don't have any weight on the hand, but now I'll plant the hands right under the elbows, all the same chaturanga position. Elbows in tight, Terry's minor. Uh, if you found that you have pain in the shoulders when you're doing this sort of thing, I highly, highly recommend you check out the heart seal. 
or if you can't afford $47 for the most phenomenal shoulder therapeutic product on the planet, then check out my isolated muscle activations playlist and look up Terry's Minor. I'll link it below. Terry's Minor is an external rotator of the arms. And so it keeps the elbows in when I'm doing my chaturanga. We don't want elbows out that pinches the front of the glenohumeral joint and it will asymmetrically wear your cartilage and that'll create problems later in life, which we all don't want. At least I don't want. So elbows snug to the rib cage, wrists maybe a little bit wider. I'm on the chest. 10 to 15% weight in the flat palms, tuck the toes, straighten the legs. And right here, I'm in an anterior pelvic tilt. Go ahead and posterior tilt. Notice where your shoulders are. Are they rounding forward? Bring them back and down. Gently gaze forward and take the back of the skull further away from the back of the upper rib cage. Lengthen the neck, drop the tongue, create space behind the palate. Maybe 25% weight in the hands. Straight legs, kick the heels back. Draw the shoulders down into the back pocket. And maybe take a breath or two to slightly lift off the bar. And when you're ready, on an inhale, slide into up dog. And exhale, down dog. So the idea, the theme of why we're going into up dog is to pattern this posterior pelvic tilt this and, and it's not about the posterior pelvic tilt. it's not about the bones fuck the bones it's about the bones are an indicator of what's going on in your muscular system and the muscular system is an indicator of what's going on in your energetic system your energetic system it's your mind your posture is your mind so the in activity of the lower belly and the compromised activity of the shoulder girdle, it inhibits future healing practices. It causes the need for future therapy practices. It, so it, the practice of today, if it takes away from the practice of tomorrow, it's not good practice, as BKS Iyengar would say. The posterior pelvic tilt will keep your sacrum and your SI joint safe. Trust me, you don't want SI pain. Just do it. Just, experience is talking here you try it your own way it's not going to end well and uh, we don't want to pattern that tension in the shoulders it will hurt the shoulders it creates tension in the neck it creates contraction dukkha and that's not good for personality so uh, the second to last which will be blocks under the shoulders this will help you pattern that um, the shoulder positioning and if you have a third block you can always put it under your chest also if you find that this is really too difficult on the shoulders to go through this drill, you could do like a forearm plank. And it's very similar. You just go through the arching and the hollow. Now that's uh, a bit challenging to then transition to the chaturanga. So um, I recommend you try it in chaturanga at least. But so this one, I'm placing the two block shoulder width right under the front of the shoulder capsule. And I already have a video on this. I'll link it below. Um, but this is part of the progression. Along the torso, and my shoulders are on the blocks. You can even do higher setting. I'll do the highest setting. Okay, so I take my leg position, straight legs, 10 to 15% weight in the hands. Obviously, fatter cork blocks would be better than these little foam ones. As I pour weight into the hands, oh yeah, it feels so good. Posterior tilt to the pelvis. Now make sure you don't have lazy legs here, no bent knees. Really straight. Tilt the pelvis, feel the lowermost abdomen below the navel engaged. Flat palms, flatten the inner thumbs on the ground. Gaze forward, space in the throat. Take a full breath. On the inhale, come to your up dog. And exhale, down dog. So what we're looking for is whatever engagement you're feeling in the lower belly when we do this chaturanga drill, carry that with you into the upward dog. Keep that posterior pelvic tilt sensation into the upward dog. Uh, and also as a little side note, an up dog, you're really pointing the legs, have a little bit of squeeze. Squeeze the legs just so ever gently, almost as if you had a block between your legs and you were squeezing. Feel just a little squeeze in your up dog. We'll do the final progression because I intended this video to be just half an hour. It is just plank. A plank PPT. 
very simple. Again, bone stacking. We don't want to be doing planches or uh, have the butt up in the air. Do your best to be in a straight line, ankles to head. Train here, not letting the inner palm come up. I can't emphasize enough. Flat palm, flat inner thumb. Decide if you want grippy fingers or extended fingers, but either way, this triangle in the web space of the hand should be flat. Extended fingers. Now here, arch and hollow. Arch. The legs stay straight the whole time. They never change. Go ahead and hold the hollow for a breath. And on an inhale, come to up dog. And exhale, down dog. Good. So you should have felt there, because we didn't go through the push-up, how easy it was to maintain that belly engagement. Um, so, I mean, that, that's kind of the crash course on it, and I don't think I need to guide you through the movement. You know how to do a sun salutation. Just be aware that uh, I'll go ahead, I'll demonstrate one. I don't know how helpful this will be for you, but I'll go ahead and demonstrate. Uh, and I know you can't see what my arms are doing, but I'll show the sun salutation without jumping. I'll just show stepping forward, stepping back. If you do stepping, alternate. Sun salute, this first rep, I'll step back and forward with the right leg first. The next one, left leg first. That's an important detail. Two, three, four, five. You will very rapidly notice that as you train the PPT in the Chaturanga, that you easily get PPT in single position in stand. So that's the end of this day three part of the workshop. If you have any questions, type them. I'll answer them now. And uh, definitely like, share. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe. And stay tuned for the heart seal. I'm so excited for this product. It's the most phenomenal thing that I've ever produced to date. It comes out October 1st. One of my favorite class so far. Wow, that's cool. Thank you. Uh, so I don't see any other questions. And I'd like to conclude with an old man. Oh. Namaste.